there are three fundamental things that we need to remember when you're looking at bag and mask. One, how should we position the baby? Two, how much pressure should I apply to cause chest inflation? And three, what should be the rate at which I should ventilate this baby? Well, we've already seen that uh, positioning the baby by putting a small towel roll under the neck is, uh, shoulder is very important. That gives the airways in alignment with the mouth. The other very important thing that uh, was mentioned earlier is the placement of this uh, mask so that it forms a proper seal. And we, uh, just to repeat, it must cover the chin, the mouth, and the nostril. So when you, <coughs> when you place this mask over here, you must see that it covers all these three areas but must not cover the eyes of the baby because obviously when you apply pressure on this mask to seal, it can cause damage to the globes of the eye and which we don't want. So having got the right mask, we've got the right position, now we begin ventilation. The amount of pressure that you're going to use should be just enough to cause this chest to rise and you can, if you watch carefully, that's where you should be focusing. And you can see here when you compress you can see the chest of the baby gently expanding. And kindly ensure that you are not emptying the entire bag like many people try to do in a panic reaction. You know, you don't go down like that. That's, that's pretty dangerous, right? Because you can infuse a high pressure into the baby and sometimes cause trauma. So just provide enough gentle pressure to cause the chest to inflate gently. The question is, at what rate? About 40 per minute is what we need. And the simple way to look at that is to do a simple count and say one, two, squeeze, one, two, squeeze, one, two, squeeze. So we'll be getting approximately 40 breaths a minute. So you have got the baby in the right position. You have the chest begin to expand. You're getting a rate of 40. And after about 20 to 30 seconds, you make an assessment. The first thing you look at is, is the baby breathing? Because remember, one of the indications for starting bag and mask is a baby who is not breathing. But don't forget there is yet another indication, and that's a baby who is breathing, but whose heart rate is less than 100. Now, if you have a heart rate less than 100 with a baby breathing, it probably suggests the baby is breathing, but is not taking enough air into the lungs. And so obviously the baby is not being oxygenated. And so a low heart rate in this situation is a kind of an indicator the baby is hypoxic. So remember, there are two indications to start bag and mask ventilation. One, a baby who's not breathing in spite of the initial tactile stimulus. And two, a baby who's showing some breathing, but the heart rate is less than 100. And so we're going to assess the breathing of the baby, and we're also going to assess the heart rate of the baby. If you find that the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute, or it is between 60 to 80, and is not increasing beyond that, in spite of giving bag and mask ventilation for 30 seconds, this is an indication where chest compression has to begin. Now, for chest compression to begin, you will have to continue bag and mask ventilation, and one person has to give chest compression. Therefore, you require two people, one giving bag and mask ventilation, and the other person giving chest compression. Now, by bag and mask ventilation, you are oxygenating, but this is not enough to pump the blood enough into the circulation if the heart rate is less than 80. And therefore, what we are going to do with chest compression, we compress the heart between the sternum and the vertebra in order to push the blood to the peripheral circulation. And for that, what you are going to do is that in the newborn baby, you will have to first identify the area where you are going to do chest compression. And for this, we identify the lower one-third of the sternum. Now, lower one-third of the sternum is demarcated by joining an imaginary line between the two nipples, as you can see here, and the portion of the sternum below that is lower one-third of the sternum. You cannot put your finger over the Ziphi sternum. So it is the lower one-third of the sternum, excluding Ziphi sternum. This is the exact position where you have to give chest compression. 
Now, there are two methods by which chest compression can be given. One is two finger method and the other method which is known as two, two thumb method which you can use. Now, I will first demonstrate to you the two finger techniques by which you can give chest compression. The positioning of the baby has to be exactly the same as you have done in the initial steps of resuscitation like placing a shoulder roll under the shoulder of the baby which is about one inch and this makes the neck slightly extended. This is the position where you will have to maintain the baby all throughout resuscitation. Now you will have to identify the lower one third of the sternum and then you place your two fingers. You can place your index and the middle finger or you can put your index and the ring finger. I always find it easier to put my index and the middle finger. Now please remember that once you have fixed your fingers, you should not withdraw your fingers during the course of chest compression. So your finger should be placed over the lower one third of the sternum and then you start giving chest compression and it has to be alternated with bag and mask ventilation. So once the bag and mask ventilation is being given and then once he once the person is just giving a pause, during that time, you will have to give one, two, three. Your direction of the finger should be straight vertical and it should not be oblique like this. It should be straight vertical and each time you give compression, the chest should go deep down about half to three-fourth of an inch every time you give a chest compression, like as I'll show you right now. I am giving it is going about half to 314. So you will have to give one, two, three, and one ventilation. So one, two, three, one ventilation, that is one is to three, in this rhythm it has to go. So the assistant is giving bag and mask ventilation, and this is the chest compression, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So in this particular manner, you will have to keep on giving. After 30 seconds of giving chest compression, you just observe whether the heart rate has come above 80 or not. If it is more than 80, you stop chest compression but continue bag and mask ventilation till you find that the heart rate is more than 100 beats per minute. This is two finger method. The other method in which you can use your both thumbs and you can place your thumb just like this. One over the other like this as I have already showed you. But this is a smaller baby. I cannot put my both thumbs like this and then I will covering not only the sternum but I am covering the ribs. So I will have to place one thumb over the other and like this and then I will have to give compression. One, two, three and then one ventilation. And another benefit for the to thumb method is that if you do not have a firm surface, your whole fingers will give you a firm surface for the baby's back. There are certain drugs which are also required during the process of resuscitation. So I would like Dr. Datta to elaborate on when the drugs are required and which drugs are required. There are only four drugs which are required and out of that usually two drugs which are most important which you must remember for resuscitation kit. Rest all drugs you should forget so far as the resuscitation of a newborn baby is concerned. So the first and most important drug you must remember is epinephrine or adrenaline. The second important drug which is the volume expander and in each and every hospital, each and every even center, you will have volume expander in the form of either normal saline or ringer lactate Please remember only either normal saline or ringer lactate and you keep it with you. The third drug which may be useful, provided mother has received morphine or pethidine four hours prior to delivery and that is naloxone, but which is not very easily available in all the centers. And nowadays, of course, uh, morphine and pethidine as are rarely used in most of these obstetrics analgesia or anesthesia. And the fourth drug, which may be required is sodium bicarbonate. No other drugs are really required, especially you remember that previously people used to use 
like nicotinamide, like a mycorin, coramin, calcium, 25% glucose, these are not really essential. And even dopamine, which has to be once upon a time was used to be kept as one of the drugs for resuscitation in the delivery room, is not to be used because very small doses to be given. You require very good monitoring with heart rate, blood pressure monitoring, infusion pumps, and which is not possible even in the best of centers in USA. And even in those centers nowadays, they are not advocating to keep dopamine in the resuscitation kit. So first and foremost thing is epinephrine, which is available to us as one in thousand solution strength. And you will have to dilute it 10 times. So you take 1 ml and 10 ml of just normal saline to make it 1 is to 10,000 dilution. The indication is, if you find that the baby's heart rate is zero right at the very beginning, or if you find that the heart rate is less than 60 in spite of giving bag and mask ventilation and chest compression for 30 seconds, this is a case where you will have to give epinephrine or adrenaline. Now, adrenaline can be given either intravenously or it can be given if you have already done an endotracheal tube, but as you would not be doing, so mainly you should restrict that it should be given through an intravenous route. The dose is 0.1 to 0.3 milliliter per kg body weight, which should be given first intravenously, and you observe whether the heart rate is going to increase or not. It is an ionotropic and chronotropic agent. That means it increases the force of contraction as well as it increases the rate of contraction of the heart. So both force as well as the rate is increasing and what we expect after that, we expect that the heart rate should be more than 100. This is our goal which we should achieve. If you find that there is no improvement, you can repeat every five minutes So the, uh, this adrenaline. And some people uh, nowadays recommendation is there that you can increase the dose from 0.1 to 0.3 ml, you can increase 10 times for the repeat dose. But third dose, fourth dose, you don't increase the further uh, concentration or further uh, dose. Now, the second drug which I have told you is normal saline or ringer lactate. These are the drugs which are very, very sometimes life-saving. In some of the situations, you all must have noted that following asphyxia, the baby looks absolutely pale and the baby's heart rate is there, but the peripheral uh, pulses are very, very weak. Now, these are the patients who are in a state of shock or peripheral circulatory failure, and most often it occurs in most of the time, you must have seen that following is a pH cases, the babies who are preterm babies, babies look very pale. And even in spite of giving a good resuscitation with 100% oxygen, bag and mask, the baby looks very pale. And in such a situation, if you uh, just uh, auscultate the heart, you will find that the heart rate is quite good, but the peripheral pulses you cannot feel at all. The secondly, if you want to take a blood pressure monitoring system is there, which is most often is not there, you will find that the BP is also would be very, very low. So these are the signs of hypovolemia. So if you find signs of hypovolemia, you take 10 ml per kg body weight of either normal saline or ringer lactate, and you inject it uh, over a period of 5 to 10 minutes. After about 15 minutes, you again try and assess whether signs of hypovolemia is still persisting or not. If you find that still signs of hypovolemia are persisting, you might just give one more dose. And the last drug, which is sodium bicarbonate, it is rarely being used. Unless and until you find that the baby is severely asphyxiated, and the recommendation nowadays that the baby has to be having at about five minutes or so after good resuscitation, if you find that the Abgar score is still less than three, or if you find that the baby is absolutely sluggish in spite of good resuscitation, at that time you will have to give sodium bicarbonate. And the dose of sodium bicarbonate which is given is around two milli equivalent per kg body weight, and which to be diluted with equal volume of distilled water and not with 10%, 5% or 25% glucose. And naloxone is only given if you find that the baby is depressed and mother has received either methadone or morphine four hours prior to delivery and the dose is 0.1 ml per kg body weight which can be given in any route either intravenous, subcutaneous, intradermal or even intratracheal. The sodium bicarbonate is given only intravenous route.